All right, all right. So since we're dealing with physical examples, we got one that'll please all the engineers out there. Um, this one dealing with the circuit, of course. So the statement reads, a capacitor C is charged up to a voltage V and connected to an uh, inductor L as shown uh, schematically in a diagram. At time equals zero, the switch S is closed. Find the current in the circuit as a function of time. How does your answer change if the resistor, if a resistor R is included in the series with C, the capacitor, and L, the inductor? All right, let's go ahead and see what the sketch is. We see if a switch up top, the current would run through the capacitor and then the inductor. You know, a CL circuit, nothing too crazy, or at least nothing we haven't seen before at this point. All right, so our solution starts off, if we were to take the current to run clockwise, accordingly from the switch, then we see that we have a second order differential equation in disguise. Namely, if we sum up all the voltages, we see that the EMF is equal to negative L times DIDT, but that's also equal to the voltage from the uh, capacitor, which is QC. Again, we were told it was charged, to, uh, charged, so we have the capacitor there to deal with. And if we separate this, we see that we have um, D by DT of I is equal to 1 over negative LC times Q. But what is, uh, where Q is the charge on the capacitor. But what is I but the change of Q with time? So if we plug in dq dt for i, and we substitute it in omega squared for the one over lc, we see that we actually do have a second order differential equation, d squared uh, over dt squared times q plus omega squared q. And we know that this can be solved using um, characteristic equations, pretty staple there, you know, pretty good at some hod homogeneous equations. So we can go ahead and move forward. And we see that the general solution to that is E or Q of T is equal to A cosine omega T plus B uh, sine omega T. And it's our job now to apply initial conditions to solve for what A and B are. Again, we were told that the capacitor was charged to a voltage V. Thus, C equals QV, but Q is equal to CV. Okay, so we have the Q there from the capacitor. But also, since we didn't have any current flowing at time equals zero, we know that I equals zero at T equals zero. So we have two initial conditions to solve for two unknowns. Let's go ahead and plug it in. So Q at zero, uh, if we plug this in, we see that cosine of zero goes to one. We like that. Sine of zero goes to zero. We like that. But we also know that from the initial condition, Q is equal to CV. So we just plug in CV on the right hand side. And thus, we see that A is actually equal to CV. That one was easy. Now we need to take the derivative of this Q uh, and set the, once we find the derivative, plug T equals zero in, uh, because again, we have current at time equals zero. And if we do that, we get negative A omega sine omega T plus B omega cosine omega T. And we set that all equal to zero, because that's what the initial condition stated. So if we do that, we plug in zero or evaluate the derivative at zero, what we see is that sine cancels to zero again, we like that, so that A goes away, and then we're left with cosine canceling to 1, so we're left with the factor of B omega equals 0, and if that's the case, B has to equal 0. Okay, so we can now simplify this uh, equation uh, with these now found constants, and we see that I of T is equal to negative SV omega sine T plus 0 times omega si cosine omega T. So that whole cosine term goes away. Sweet, but we also know that omega, which we substituted earlier, is uh, one over square root of LC. So we plug that in where we see both on the outside and inside of sine. Um, and if we wish, we can uh, combine that C into the radical to divide it out. And we see that we have I of T is equal to negative V square root of C over L sine of T divided by square root LC. And so that's our solution to this uh, second order differential equation. Now, if we were to put a resistor in, the oscillation uh, is damped, and we see this happen in a couple other texts. If you want references, I can send them to you. But this is just an RLC circuit, and we know that uh, this modified differential equation is going to turn into L d squared q over dt squared plus r dq dt plus 1 over cq. 
This is how we know that based on this model of the differential equation that we're going to have a damp system. But nonetheless, that's just another differential equation. I'm sure the electrical engineers can chime in and work with that a little more. But nonetheless, a fun question that has a physical application.